Okay, so hello fellow, fellow atheists, my name is Yuval, uh, I'm uh, originally from Israel, right now living outside of Israel, but still follow Israeli politics, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the elections in Israel and how do they affect uh, religious affairs in the Israeli society. Uh, just a bit of a background, Israel is a parliament called Knesset, composed of 120 members, Knesset members, and normally every four years Israel has elections, and then uh, the seats are allocated according to uh, the proportion of the votes that each party gained uh, in the elections. Uh, this elect these elections were uh, expectedly uh, very good for the right wing and for the religious parties. Uh, so what happened in these elections was that the ultra-orthodox religious parties got 16 seats in the parliament, again out of 120, and the right, right wing, religious right-wing party got another five seats in the parliament. So in total the religious parties the purely religious parties got 21 seats in out of a parliament that is composed of 100, 120 seats. What this means is that they have a lot of power to extort uh, the, the ruling party or the main party in the coalition, the Likud, which gained 35 seats in the parliament. And they can pretty much get away with the, making more and more demands to allow religion encroach into Israeli um, pub, in, into the Israeli public sphere. Uh, this is especially concerning when you talk about the ultra orthodox, because the the ultra orthodox right now in Israel run pretty much like a cult. You have a lot of ultra orthodox young people studying in the religious scholarly institutions of the ultra orthodox society. They are being funded by Israeli taxpayer money. They're completely dependent on their leadership because if they leave those institutions and decide they want to go to work or they want to go to the army, obviously they lose their funding. So it's far harder for them to um, to attend their daily needs because they now they have to work for their money as opposed to the scholarship they got before. Uh, and now that the religious ultra-Orthodox religious parties are going to be part of the coalition, they're going to demand more funding and more exemptions to their young people and they're going to demand more social security money for the family so they can have more children so they'll keep growing and growing without contributing much to the economy and as they will grow they're going to make more demands about how religion would express in the Israeli public sphere. So they, they might come up with demands about public transport on the Sabbath, uh, closing certain roads on the Sabbath, and who knows what else they, they can come up with. So these elections are very bad for secular people and atheists in Israel. Moreover, the religious right wing might decide now uh, to put more pressure so that their nationalist religious agenda with respect to the West Bank, for example, uh, will be manifested. So they might uh, demand the government to annex parts of the West Bank to Israel, to build more settlement, settlements there. And just so you'll be aware, some members of this party and some of its supporters clearly say they're not that happy with democracy. For as far as they're concerned, democracy is only an interim stage on the way to a better state that will be run according to Jewish traditional law. Uh, the, the, the Israel's Prime Minister-elect, the one who's going to be leading the coalition, Benjamin Netanyahu, is not a religious person. People who know him personally actually say he's an atheist. However, he doesn't care at all about caving in to the demands of the religious people in order to maintain his power. So as a rule, we are talking about very bad news in Israel for secular, free-thinking free and atheist uh, people. If you have any more questions, Please feel free to comment. I'll be happy. I will be happy to accommodate. Thank you. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. 
But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.